Hi, I'm Ed Hamilton from the Ministry of Rome, and I'm joined today by Brian Sethmus. Thanks for coming down. Thanks for having me. And Gerald O'Connard from Beverage Testing Institute in Chicago. I'm working on a black rum project, and I googled caramel color and found Sethmus caramel color. We actually got our start way back in 1880, and uh, by my great great grandfather started the company. And believe it or not, the first product we ever colored was whiskey to make it appear more aged, basically. And caramel color, we think of sugar. Mm -hmm. um, what, was, what were they making it out of back then? Back then, caramel color was made from sucrose. And uh, we made it from sucrose till about the mid-1940s. And then we moved our production from Chicago out to Iowa because corn, corn sugar, sugar or corn syrup became the raw material at that time. And that was because it was less expensive or more plentiful? Um, and it actually, that and also the fact that uh, caramel colors made from corn have a longer shelf life than caramel colors made from sucrose. What is the shelf life of a caramel color? On a liquid caramel color, most of the caramel colors have a two-year shelf life. The powders have a three-year. Some of the sucrose only have a one-year shelf life. So we say that as a minimum, but uh, we have some caramel colors that, as long as they're stored in proper conditions, can last a lot longer than that. Like so. a cool, dark place? Yes, exactly. <laughs> so if, if caramel color is left out in warm temperatures, it'll get thicker, basically, and get darker. It'll continuously grow and get darker as time goes on. So how much of this stuff does it take? And what do we what do we have to know to you know, color something? You know, a little goes a long way with caramel color. Uh, the main product that we color is the cola industry, and there's really only a couple drops in every can of Coke or Pepsi. And however, when you do the math, it adds up quite quite a bit. I mean, they say Coke would be kind of a yellowish green without caramel color, which obviously wouldn't be as appealing to the to consumers. Well, we're not here to disclose any of their trade secrets no. today. <laughs> so. Uh, You've, you've got a couple of different colors, five different colors. Uh, which is the most prevalent, or what, what, what do you recommend to color a spirit? For spirits, usually there's a little bit different than a cola. Colas are usually uh, really dark brown. Obviously, you're looking at a brown application, but most brandies and rums will like to have a little bit of a reddish tone to them. So we will usually use an RT80 liquid caramel color, the RT standing for reddish tone. Well, can we uh, try some of that? By all means. Let's so this is an RT. This red is the top. RT, yes. There's one drop. I'm going to put three drops in. Two drops. Three drops. It's quite viscous. Yes, this, this sample is a little more viscous, but obviously you know, I have something to stir. Oh, yeah, maybe grab one of those. Now it's settled in the bottom. Mm -hmm. But as I stir it, oh, there it's starting to. Mm dissolve. Now this is just in water. Yes. How, how would alcohol affect this? I would assume it would dissolve faster? Yes, yeah, so, yeah, alcohol would the, excuse me, distribute a little bit faster, but you can tell just by three drops it's already getting to a very reddish tone to it. And then you add two or three more and it'll basically become two or three times as dark. So to get something black, we would continue to use this or would use something else? We would use a, a different caramel color. There's a DS400 caramel color, which is five times as dark as this particular. DS, it's five times as, but it's the same product, similar product? Yes, it's made very similarly. Uh, basically the numbers of the caramel color are related to the strength. So 400 being five times darker than that. Um, it's the same raw material as that. It's just, um, it uses a, one other different reactant to get that darker shade. I see just a little bit more down in the bottom as it uh, sits here, it continues to evolve and get a little bit darker. Let's do another one with a dark product. You warned me not to get any of this on me, so I'm not yes. going to touch no, this. No, that's okay. Mm. You can see immediately how much darker sure. that is. Well, so that's three drops. Now, how does how does that affect the taste? You know, believe it or not, caramel color, even though it sounds like a, people get confused with caramel candy and caramel color, caramel color gets its name from the caramelization process. Um, caramel color adds just very little flavor contribution to it. The DS400 that we've just used right there is extremely mild tasting. You're not going to really have any taste repercussions from it. Well, I'll... I'll yeah, go ahead, I'll take try a sip. It, sure. See if you can... Well, that tastes better than the water in some places. <laughs> uh, I'm shocked if I didn't know that that had anything in it. Messes with your head, doesn't it? I 
change, I, I detect a slight change in viscosity. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's the different rims on the glasses, but uh, there's virtually no taste there. Yeah. Uh, People taste with their eyes, though. There's That's no why we're in business, though. There's no discernible taste. Uh, I expected to immediately have a something. Mm -hmm. And usually you wouldn't put that, I mean, you could have, you added a lot more, you had about five drops to it. Well, thank you very much for coming down today. I uh, look forward to working with you. Well, thanks for having me. Thank you. Cheers.